So the sleeve is the first of the metabolic surges we're gonna talk about. And what you see here is a picture of the esophagus. This is the whole stomach, and that's the duodenum or duodenum, or first part of the small intestine. And what we do here is we separate the stomach off by removing about 80% of this portion of the stomach, okay? So we take it out. And what we leave is this banana-shaped, comma-shaped, or half-moon reservoir called the sleeve. Now, a little background on the sleeve. Excuse me, this sleeve gastrectomy is, is actually part of duodenal switch surgery. It was first performed in an open form in 1988 as part of the duodenal switch surgery. It was first performed laparoscopically and as an intention of, of, of a staging type thing in 1999 by Michel Gagné. We tell people that they should expect if they're successful with the sleeves to lose about 60% of their excess body weight at a year. There was the second annual international consensus on the sleeve in Miami last year as part of this consensus. It's about a year ago. The next one is the third one is going to be this December in New York. And what we basically did was summarize where we were as far as the way we approached the sleeve gastrectomy. Now there are 35 papers in the surgical literature, and there are more since this slide was designed. Over 2,400 patients studied. The mortality rate, about 1.9 per 1,000. That's 0.19%. So the band is 0.1%, 1 in the 1,000 to sleeve, 0.19 or 1.9 per 1,000. And you can use the sleeve as a be-all and end-all surgery, what we call primary surgery, or the idea of how it was invented and designed, which is a stage procedure for very morbidly obese people. Okay? And the conclusion also was that it was a very effective bariatric surgery. Now the advantage of the sleeve is that you get this gastric restriction because you make the stomach smaller, but you get the metabolic part because you remove this portion of the stomach. 90% of the body's ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N, ghrelin, does anybody know here, ever heard of ghrelin? Ghrelin is the appetite hormone. So ghrelin, 90% of our ghrelin lives in this, this part of the stomach called the fundus, and we remove this part of the stomach. So this is a very good operation for taking hunger away. And ghrelin also has been studied and has a lot of influence, potential influence over the way we handle glucose. And so it's a very important hormone for people who have uh, insulin resistance and, and potentially pre-diabetics and diabetics. So the sleeve, that's where this metabolic thing uh, comes from. The other reason the sleeve is metabolic, and I want to overburden you with too much detail, but it's pretty exciting stuff, is that when you do this removal, the reservoir you leave behind, it actually empties a lot faster. And by emptying faster, the sleeve corrects a lot of the insulin resistance hormones, two hormones, GLP-1 and PYY-36, that are very important in diabetes, okay? And especially this idea of diabetes coming from the gut. So the sleeve does that. So that's why we say that the sleeve is me metabolic, and that's why it's a metabolic surgery. So it can be useful as a first aid surgery for super, very super morbidly obese people. And again, what I talked to you about as far as this GI tract continuity thing, same for the sleeve as the band. No need for permanent vitamin mineral supplementation because you're not doing intestinal bypass. And we've talked about the decrease uh, in ghrelin, change in metabolism, and the increased emptying. Okay? So those are all the strong advantages of the sleeve gastrectomy. Now the disadvantage of the sleeve is the first surgery I've shown you so far tonight that's a stapling surgery. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that I think people have to understand that stapling procedures like the sleeve and the bypass and the duodenal switch can entail a higher short-term risk, immediate perioperative risk of bleeding, blood clots, and leaks. Okay, that's unique to stapling procedures. Now, I think it's also very important as you're seeing patients and you're screening them in the office when you meet them, that you're looking for reasons that this would be a good or maybe not so good an operation. And I think reflux or heartburn, severe heartburn, is a very important sign for people who might be interested in the sleeve gastrectomy. So we say that reflux is a relative contraindication to a sleeve gastrectomy. It's because there's so much pressure generated, generated in that sleeve that it can be very, very troubling and difficult to manage a patient who has a sleeve who develops reflux after who already has reflux. And also there are people who have severe heartburn where the heartburn itself, is, the acid, has already caused some damage. And for that reason, the development of something called Barrett's esophagus, we, we really want to shy away from using the sleeve gastrectomy first. So it's not for everybody, but so I think you have to be very selective as to you know, who the right people are for some of these surgeries. And that's the way it should work with all these surgeries. The sleeve is the only irreversible bariatric surgery. 
Okay? None of the other searches we talked about are, because once you remove that part of the stomach, you can't get it out of the bucket, you know, and put it back in. Okay? Now, one disadvantage of the sleeve, and this is changing every day, uh, recently another major insurance carrier in the United States um, has now taken on the sleeve for coverage, and that's Aetna, and Cigna, and Uni excuse me, United uh, had beforehand. But there is still a relative lack of insurance coverage for people who are interested in sleeve hysterectomy. For example, Medicare hasn't yet decided that they will endorse the sleeve and pay for it. So we're still waiting for that, that, those things to happen. Now the sleeve is a newer surgery to be used as a st single stage surgery. Remember we said its background is staging patients. So there's a very limited amount of long-term, quality long-term data, and that's more than five-year data. So we tell people that, and the ones that go for it have to just understand there's just, the data's not there yet long-term. So we, what does that mean? It means we don't really know if the durability of weight loss is there, if there's gonna be a need for the second state surgery the way the sleeve was um, designed. 